What is up? What is up? What is up? Awesome people of the internet. Happy Thursday, everybody. Happy day two of conference tournaments. Y'all, we got some stuff to talk about. And so we're going to we're going to for sure get into it. Um, but I did just want to say happy, happy uh, Thursday, everybody. Um, we are we're in the thick of things, right? We are in March. Uh, the NCAA tournament is going to be coming up very, very shortly. And right now. We're trying to to find out who is actually going to make the NCAA tournament. Um, and 32 guaranteed placements in the NCAA tournament is determined from conference tournament play. So we have 32 conferences and it's, it's the time where they have a guarantee spot. So of course we know that the bigger sort of power five conferences will have multiple teams in the NCAA tournament, but the NCAA t tournament is great to ensure that some of those teams that were sort, sort of on the bubble of making it into the NCAA tournament, it's a way for them to kind of put together an argument for themselves. And um, you have to show up in conference tournament play because if you don't, that could be it. That could be the end of your season right there. And um, that is kind of what I want to talk about today because... Yeah, we got some, we got some games to talk about. Um, some games that happened in in the NCAA um, for uh, for conference play. So let let's get into it. But first, actually, before we do, just want to see what y'all got to say in the chat. Uh, Antonio said you were right once again. Anybody can get guy. I mean, y'all know the motto. Y'all y'all know the motto. The motto does not change. Anybody can get got on any day it doesn't matter how good you are it doesn't matter um how bad of a team you're playing anybody can get got if you do not show up to play you can go <laughs> you can go um and and that's something that we we continue to learn every single day every single day um sub-zero says awesome people of the internet yeah what up what up awesome people of the internet i hope y'all having a great day what up, Holly? What up, Holly? <laughs> um, what's up? What's up, Michaela? What's up, Michaela? <laughs> Miss Drama Queen says I'm worried. What you worried for, Miss Drama Queen? What you worried for? What you worried for? Let me know. Let me let me let me know why you worried. <laughs> why are you worried? <laughs> yes, yes, Bree Wayne. Yes, yeah. We gon' we gon' we gon' get into Oregon State. Uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna get into Oregon State and the fact that Oregon State is, they're on a mission, guys. Um, they're not, they're not playing, you know, when we, when we talk about a team like Oregon State, actually, actually, hold up. Let's, let's just start with Oregon State. Let's start with, let's start with, uh, Oregon State versus Colorado, um, which was just a crazy, crazy, crazy game. Um, yeah, let, let's let's start there. Let's start there. Also, um, when you guys are joining, if you can hit that like button, that would be absolutely fantastic. If you can hit that like button, that really, really helps the channel and helps more people find the video. And also, if you are not uh, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. We are still on our road to ten thousand subscribers. So yeah, if you want to um, join that, uh, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. All right, so let's get into Oregon State versus Colorado. So this game was earlier today and it was a battle basically to the end. It was, um, so Oregon State, if you don't know, Oregon State beat Colorado 85 to 79. This was a game that went into double overtime, double overtime um, and for the most part, sure, Colorado tried their best, but, 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 uh, there is, there is this girl on Oregon State, and her name is Reagan, I tell all my and, how important and she did her thing today. <laughs> uh, Reagan did her thing today, y'all, 27 points, 13 rebounds. Um, you had a uh, Tamina Gardner, um, who had 13 points as well, 11 rebounds. So two double doubles on Oregon state. And this game was 
really about who can um who could last, who could outlast the other team, who could outlast the other team and show that they are going to sort of be at the top of the Pac-12. And it was Oregon State. And for Colorado, Colorado is a team that has been on a downward skid for a while now. Um, they got not, they're now knocked out of the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, we'll see exactly where their seating is in the NCAA tournament. They will make the NCAA tournament. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that they will be in the NCAA tournament, even though they did lose um, uh, to Oregon State. And Oregon State actually was a better team than Colorado. But Colorado has been on a losing streak or er, a downward skid for a while, right? They the last game they destroy Oregon, which um, make makes sense, right? In in the first game they play they played Oregon yesterday, uh, Colorado did, and they beat Oregon pretty badly, uh, seventy nine to thirty, and that game was sort of like, eh, it's Oregon, it's it's not the it's not the biggest deal in the world, right? This is this wasn't like they were playing a uh, a, a super a super tough team, right? They were just playing Oregon. But before that, Colorado lost to Oregon State. They lost to UCLA. They lost to Utah. They lost to um, Oregon State earlier, it, it, like sort of sort of a couple weeks ago. And this is a Colorado team that looked very, very, very good at the start of the season. And as the Pac, as Pac-12 play sort of continued, they just they couldn't hack it. <laughs> they, they, they absolutely could not ha could not hack it. I mean, like I, I think that um, uh, like I think that this is a team that you know I don't I don't exactly know how to peg uh, Colorado because yes, the Pac-12 is a gauntlet absolute is a gauntlet so i'm not sure if when they get into the ncaa AA tournament and they play other uh, another team if they'll like how far they'll actually be able to make it like if it's just the pac-12 that's just screwing with <laughs> with colorado and just messing them up i mean the only thing they can really destroy is is oregon that's it you can't they can't really beat really anybody else uh besides that so i think that um Uh, Elise says, uh, do these losses affect their regions in the NCAA tournament? I don't totally know. Um, I know for sure it's going to affect their seating, like where they're seated, um, in the NCAA double tournament, but, um, I'm not, I'm not quite sure in terms of, uh, of, uh, if it affects their regions. I'm, I'm not sure if someone else knows, uh, please, 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 please let me know, um, let me know about uh, about that. Uh, Not your average 10K says, didn't even know this game happened today. My ESPN app normally tells me this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the reason why you probably didn't see it is because there's so many games happening, so 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 many games happening, um, and I think it's just that you know ESPN is probably telling you. Uh, the games that they think that you care about the most, um, you know, and maybe that's why you missed it. But but yeah, Oregon State beat Colorado today, eighty five to seventy nine. Um, if you're curious about how, like Colorado did, I mean they they looked pretty good, you know, uh, throughout the game. They had a they had a really good start in the in the first quarter. Dropped off in the second, got it back in the third, dropped off in the fourth. And then in overtime, both overtimes, they just couldn't hack it. And that was that was the ball game. That was the ball game right there. Um, so yeah, Oregon State does move on. I mean, I don't know. Not not too too much to say about it, but but y'all, Oregon State is some something serious. Y'all. They they are something, something serious. All right, let's move on to some other games that happened today. Um we're I, there was one game that I was absolutely surprised about. Um, and this was, uh, <laughs> this was the University of North Carolina getting got against Miami. Like, y'all, y'all, UNC is a very good school. 
I think UNC is way better than Miami. Their record is similar. Their record is very similar. Uh, so UNC is, is 19 and 12 on the season, and, and Miami is 19 and 11 on the season. But looking at the style of play, looking at the roster, looking at the games that they've played, I did put UNC over Miami. And 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 uh, full full disclosure. I wasn't able to 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 to, act, to fully watch this game uh, for for UNC versus Miami, and I am just shocked that UNC got got. But at the same time, I'm not shocked because, as I always say, as I always say, anybody can get got. So when we look at this game, this game was a very very low scoring game. Um, they they uh, UNC lost 59 to 60. Miami had 60. UNC had 59, so they, they barely, barely, barely lost in this game. And I think that when we when we think about um, this UNT, UNC team, they were a team that, I feel like I said it before, they're a team that confuses me. They're a team that um, can look very, very good at times, um, and then they can look like trash, right? So so this is a team, this is a team that beat, UN, that, that beat NC State earlier this year. This is a team that um, went, you know, um, one and one against Duke this year. Uh, yes, they lost against Virginia Tech, but they had a really good run. Uh, like they, they looked good in that game. They've, they beat Louisville. Um, you know, they, they've had some pretty good games this season, but then other times they look terrible, right? Um, and I think that. I, I do still think that UNC will make it into the NCAA tournament because they're just they're still a really good squad. I do think they still make it, uh, possibly, <laughs> you know. Uh, but but they're not gonna they're gonna have horrible seating if they if they if they make it if they make it they're gonna have absolutely absolutely horrible seating. Now I, I want to say shout out shout out to Miami shout out to the Hurricanes because they showed up and showed out. You know, because they they showed up ready and they were like, hey, we just going we gonna give it to them. We're gonna give it to them and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna give it to them and see what happens. And what happened? They won. Um, shout out to um, a player of the game was Cheyenne Day Wilson uh, for the Hurricanes. Who she had 13 points in this game. Uh, again, this was a low scoring game. This was a very very low scoring game. You, you didn't have anybody on either team have more than 15 points. Nobody. Again, the score was 60 to 59. So very, very low scoring game. Uh, but that happens sometimes. And, you know, you just got to find a way to will yourself to win a game. And, you know, UNC couldn't get it done. And they got got, y'all. They got got. Uh, because, as we know, anybody, 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 anybody can get got. All right, let's see. Let's see what y'all what y'all got to say in the comments. Uh, Bree Wayne says if Virginia Tech's Kitley, Elizabeth Kitley is not back, they could potentially get uh, Miami to do possibly. I mean, you know, I, Elizabeth Kitley. Yes. Yes. Georgia Amore is on Virginia Tech and Georgia Amore is absolutely outstanding. Right. And they have a phenomenal coach in Kenny Brooks. Um, so they have what they need to beat Miami. But at the same time, I think Miami's riding high off of this win. And who knows? Who knows what we may see from Miami um come, you know, uh, you know, come come uh the rest of the rest of the tournament for the ACC. So like I who knows? Who knows? Um Uh, Bear says uh, Deja Kelly's field goal uh, percentage has been 37% or lower for four years. No way she plays in a W with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think she wants to play in the W. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if uh, if if team drafts her sort of very, very late in the uh, second round. And we'll see if uh, or if she doesn't get drafted, we'll see if she makes it um, to a uh, to a training camp for a WNBA team. We'll, we'll see. I mean, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle. It's going to be an uphill battle for her, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. It's going to be an uphill battle. Um, yeah, RC. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they're on, they're on the bubble. They're on the bubble. 
Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, bear. We're gonna get we're gonna get into that because I I, I want to I want to make sure to give, um, I want to make sure to give Vegas the 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 love that they deserve for uh for being the first team the first WNBA team that I know about that has ever sold out uh, before the season started. Like that is just phenomenal. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into that in, into that um, later on after we get through the the different games that happened today. Guys, um, there's some other games that happened today. I, I actually do have a, a graphic for for one of those. Um, so we can kind of we can kind of move on right now to uh, let's sort of move on to uh, the SEC real quick. So we had we have we had several games in the SEC so far. Um, when we look at a, uh, when we look at the bracket again, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to make a, like, like update the bracket for every single, um, conference, but I did, I did do it for, uh, for sec because it feels like, it feels like most of the people who watch this channel, um, is extremely familiar with the sec. So I figured I should just, um, make it for the sec and, you know, uh, for, for tomorrow's stream and for future streams, I'll try to have, uh, the rest of the conferences, um, as a, as a bracket so we can sort of X out the teams that lose and whatnot. But yeah, let's move on to, uh, let's move on to the S E C. So game started yesterday, uh, for, for, for S E C play. And, uh, we saw teams that should have won win. So not a ton of surprise, right? We, uh, we saw that, um, we saw that, you know, Florida beat Missouri 66 to 60. We saw that, um, you know, not a surprise, absolutely not a surprise. Florida was the better team and Missouri was, you know, the worst in the conference. Um, so not, a, again, not a surprise, but um, we also saw uh, the fact that Kentucky was able to uh, get the dub over Georgia as well. So, so both Kentucky and Florida moved on to the second round, which happened today. And, um, and today we saw the fact that, you know, a team that I would say was not supposed to get got, that team got got. So uh, Texas A&M played Mississippi State, and y'all, Mississippi State lost. <laughs> Mississippi State lost, and I personally was pretty shocked about it. Now, I, I think that I think that when – when um when you see a team like Mississippi State, they have they have pieces, right? They they've looked pretty good at times this season. And it wasn't the fact that they lost today. It was how they lost that I thought was like extremely problematic. So this is a this is a team that, you know, was the favorites to win, in my opinion, was the favorite to win in the game against te uh, Texas A&M, but they got got. They lost 72. Uh, <laughs> Texas A&M had 72 points. Mississippi State had 56 points, y'all. Like, that was, yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't It wasn't a good showing from Mississippi State. And and, and they're a team that, that yeah, I, I, I thought they looked good. But clearly, um, you know, heading into the game, I, I, I thought that they were – going to win pretty pretty easily but y'all when a, when a team steps up they step up you know um it was it was really the second half that did it in for Mississippi State and yeah what it, what is what is Texas Stadium called the Aggies I think yeah that's what they're called the Aggies showed up in the second half and just absolutely dominated especially in that third quarter the fourth quarter pretty pretty even evenly matched um but but it was clear that after that third quarter it was over it was over it was absolutely over for mississippi state and you know it's you know sort of is what it is guys you gotta you gotta make sure to always 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 um show up <laughs> You got, you got you got to show up because otherwise you're gonna get got. As we know, you going you're going to get got. Um, so yeah, that that was that game. Uh, we also saw the fact that um, yes, yeah, uh, Kulabali uh, did go off. 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, how many points did she have? She had, she had like 70 po- 17 points in that game. Um, yeah, she did go off. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Um, now, I think that um, just sort of looking at looking at the rest of the pathway for for Texas A and M, it's not like it's it's not like the like te- like Texas A and M is going to make it any further <laughs> in the SEC conference. <laughs> um. Oh, actually, I put the X in the wrong spot. <laughs> I put the X in the wrong spot. <laughs> um. Yeah. The yeah. Auburn didn't lose. Uh. Maybe I'll. I'll. I'll maybe I'll. I mean, let me try to fix it real quick. Um. Yeah. They did. They didn't lose. Um. Anyway, I don't think it's likely at all that this team makes it further than where they're at right now. Um. And the reason why is because. Their next game is against the gauntlet of who? Of um, uh, South Carolina. And yeah, (laughs) they're going to get they're going to get got real bad against South Carolina. Uh, America, that uh, that hoodie is is coming up. Uh, That that hoodie is coming. That 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 hoodie and T-shirt about anybody can get got that is coming. It's coming. Um be just a little bit patient. It's it's coming. It's coming. Um but yeah. So, yeah, again, Mississippi State got got today. Texas A&M makes it another day. They live another day just to get likely destroyed by South Carolina <laughs> in the next game. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? That's okay. That's okay. They made it they made it farther than people were expecting. They made it farther than people were expecting. So, like, you know, shout out, shout out to uh, Texas A and M. You know, we'll see, we'll see how the how the uh, how the Aggies fare against the Gamecocks. But it, you know, doesn't doesn't look likely. But as I say, anybody can get got. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, moving on to the Tennessee Kentucky game, Kentucky. Got a big X on their on their face. Uh, of course, they lost to Tennessee because Tennessee is a very good team. Now, one thing that I thought was pretty impressive is that is the fact that Sarah Puckett, you know, did her thing today. Um, you, usually, when we talk about Tennessee, we're always talking about one player. Where where uh, we're talking about one player, and um, and her name is uh, Rakia Jackson, and I thought that. Sarah Puckett did a really, really good job. Um, Rakia Jackson didn't, didn't play much in that game. Um, only had eight points. Uh, uh, Sarah Puckett saved the day for this team. Um, and, and so, and so I, I think that's, that's good. That is very, very good to have, to have players. Yes, you have your star players, and that's fine and dandy. That's, that's amazing. You have your star players, but it's good to have sort of supporting players who can sort of uh, not just not just give you you know eight or nine points, but can go off for a twenty-two point game like Sarah Puckett did, you know. So I, I, I thought that was uh, I thought that was I thought that was pretty impressive. I thought that was pretty impressive. And when you look at a player like Rakia Jackson, she needs to be on the court for uh, for Tennessee. But Kentucky was smart, got her in foul trouble, but they couldn't stop Sarah Puckett. <laughs> You know, so so you got you got you got the star player out, but then you got the supporting cast that started to do their thing. So you know, I'm I'm just I'm just saying, I I am I am just saying that um, you know you need other players to 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 show up and show out, and that's what Tennessee had, and that's why Tennessee lives another day to fight against Alabama in the next game. Now, moving on, we are going to continue to just move on down the list about the other uh, the other sort of uh, SEC games that happened. And guys, actually, actually, before we do that, I do want to see what y'all have to say uh, about, um, uh, about some of these games today. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Rakia Jackson did only have... Um, she did only have eight points in this game today. Uh, but, you know, foul trouble. You know, she only played, I think she played like 17 minutes. So foul trouble can can hurt you. 
foul, foul trouble can hurt you. Um, Barrett says, I like Rakia, but she ain't a dog. Uh, that's, that's the only thing missing. I think Rakia Jackson is, has a lot of talent and is, and is just, she has the potential to have, to have a phenomenal career in the WNBA. Now I think, and, and, and here's, here's a critique that I think it's actually more about a critique of, uh, of Tennessee's, uh, the way they run their offense than on Rakia Jackson. But there's a lot of times where, um, Rakia Jackson sort of seems a little bit too passive, uh, where, you know, they're, she's, she's doing her thing and all of a sudden they stop, they stop, uh, looking for her, uh, to give the ball to her and, and she just sort of like fades away in the background and she becomes a non-factor. Now, I think that is Tennessee's offense more than it is on Rakia Jackson. Um, so, you know, uh, but yeah. So I, I, I am excited to see possibly Rakia Jackson playing for the Chicago Sky because I think that, I think that um, Coach Teaspoon will really work well with Rakia Jackson and, and really, really get that dog um that you know that that dog in Rakia Jackson because because Rakia Jackson has it it's just um I think you have to run different plays and you have to make sure she's involved even if she's not going to take the final shot you need to make sure she's involved and and I think that's a lot of times I feel like that's not something that Tennessee does and I'm just like okay well Come on, like she's your best player. Get her involved in the game. Even even if even if she's not the final person to shoot. Even if she's not the final person to shoot. And I think there's sometimes where she just seems um she she doesn't seem engaged in the game sometimes. But again, I'm not sure if that is on her or if that is on um or if that's on um the coaching staff and, and, and the plays that they're actually drawing up. Uh, let's see. Let's see what y'all got to say. Uh, JB says, completely agree. I think Rakia uh, would have flourished uh, even more if she played at, at a school that wasn't offensively challenged. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> JB offensively challenged. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yes. Bear. I agree. Yeah. Teresa, uh, yeah, teaspoon is gonna. She's gonna. She don't. She's gonna challenge her a lot. She's gonna challenge her for the better. And I, I am. I am very much excited for it uh, because I. I assume. I assume that she is going to. Um, she's gonna go, gonna play for uh, Tennessee. I mean, not not Tennessee. She's gonna play for uh, Chicago. Uh, but guys, please hit that like button. We got we got a uh, over two hundred and seventy people in the chat, but. We only got 77 likes. So if y'all could hit that like button, that would be absolutely fantastic. It really, really helped the channel um, and help more people find the stream. <laughs> uh, fact, uh, Rue, I'm just gonna call you Rue. Uh, hearing how South Carolina players have a chip on their shoulders about those individual awards, I'm ready to see how they will react. Uh, from here on out, never know. I loved women's basketball more than men's. Yeah, I think, uh, y'all, I think Don Thaley has talked to that team about uh, the fact that they didn't get those uh, individual awards that they wanted. And she has, I guarantee you, she's challenged them. And y'all, I wouldn't want to go against South Carolina right now. I, I, I wouldn't want to go against them. I would not want to go against them because... Yeah, I I'm, I could see them absolutely going off and destroying the the rest of the teams that they face in the in the um in the tournament because they're they're gonna be like hey what they said they, they said they said y'all better than me you know you know I I think I think I think that's what that's what's gonna happen you know Ashlyn gonna be like what y'all thought I wasn't a six woman of the year watch me watch me work. Uh, you gonna you gonna see you gonna see um, you gonna see you know um, Tahina Pow Pow being like y'all didn't think I was first team okay watch what happened you know Raven Johnson gonna be like oh I, I was snubbed okay watch what happened like I, I I think I think I think they gonna come into the game with the chip on their shoulder and they about to, <laughs> they about the they 
I feel like they're about to destroy these teams. Not just win, not just win, but destroy these teams. Uh, but you know, y- you know, I, 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 I think, uh, yeah, I think Don Staley challenged him. I, I, I think she challenged him. And she. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go against him. I'm just saying that right now. I, I, I would, I wouldn't want to go against him. I, I really, I really wouldn't. But you know, you know, uh, good luck, good luck to Texas A and M. I will say this, I will say this. Even though, even though South Carolina is extremely good, even though they are the best team in um, women's college basketball right now, they can get got. So, so I will say, we never know. It could be that that the uh, that Texas A and M has the best game of their lives and beat South Carolina. Is it likely? No, it's absolutely not likely. But technically, as I always say, anybody can get got. Anybody can get got. And, you know, um, Texas A&M pulled off one upset. Who knows? Maybe they'll pull, maybe they'll pull off the upset of a lifetime <laughs> and, beat, and beat South Carolina. It's, 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 it's not going to happen. Well, actually, it might happen. It might happen. It might happen. I mean, as, as, as we know, anybody can get, get got. We... we T-shirt, sweatshirt coming, uh, but I, I think that it's not likely, <laughs> and, and 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 it's more likely that South Carolina will absolutely dominate the competition and 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 cruise their way to the championship for uh, for um, the SEC. But you know, I don't, you know, I'm just I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I am just saying. Um, so I, I I did I did want to. Um, uh, talk about another game, and I actually I got the graphic wrong, and I I do apologize for that. I'm gonna fix it right now, and uh, and and put and put a new one up. I I do apologize. I have um, Auburn did not lose. <laughs> Auburn did not lose today. Arkansas lost. Um, and in my haste of uh of, of putting the graphic together, I uh I accidentally mislabeled that. So so my apologies, folks. My apologies. I'm gonna get that fixed right now. Uh, but in the meantime, I do want to hear what you all have to say about uh, the SEC game so far. Uh, what are your thoughts about them? Are you uh, surprised about anything? Are you um, are you not surprised about anything? Let me know. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I, I, I got I got I got the graphic fixed. I got the graphic fixed. Um, Kara says, "Do you think it will be a rematch with LSU and South Carolina?" Uh, yes. Uh, so I absolutely see LSU beating Auburn, and then LSU beating Ole Miss because likely. Uh, whoever whoever makes it, either Florida or uh, or, or Vanderbilt, I think the, I think um, Ole Miss will beat them, and then you know so so this ne- this next line is going to be um, U.S. Uh, LSU versus Ole Miss, and then we're going to see o- uh, you're going to see LSU versus South Carolina in the finals, in my opinion, um, and so yeah, I do I do think we'll see a rematch. I do. Um, now winner is. You know, I, I I don't know. Uh, I think it's likely. I think it's very very likely that it's going to be South Carolina. But I do think that uh, LSU is a team that looks better right now. They look a whole lot better, and I um I want to know um how much better, right? Because yes, they've been you know playing well of late. And they've been uh, doing, you know, doing a good job against uh, the the SEC lately. But you know, the the teams that they played is not South Carolina. So I I am I am very much looking to see is this new and improved LSU like how they rank against South Carolina because they gave South Carolina a run for their money the last time they that they played. Now it's it's about Okay, well, how how can you dissect this South Carolina team and not just uh, you know uh, try to hang with them defensively, 
But 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 how can you offensively get some buckets? How can Haley Van Liff go off and 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 get really really high quality shots as a shooting guard? Right. I think it's going to be tough for a team like LSU to beat South Carolina. I think it's possible. I do. And I think they are a better team. However, I'm still not sure how much better they are because the level of competition in the SEC compared to South Carolina is very different, right? Just because you have a lot of really good games uh, lately against SEC, the SEC, that's that's not that, you know, that's not, they're not the, you know, it's not the best team in the country, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like... I think, yeah, I am just, I, I want to see. I, and, I, and I think once we see the rematch ver with LSU versus uh, South Carolina, then I think that'll help me kind of kind of make up my mind more about really what predictions I have for the NCAA tournament. Because, you know, um, even if LSU loses, it's about like how much, how much they lose by, right? If this is a wire to wire game, Assuming that we see see that rematch in the championship, uh, in the SEC championship game, uh, assuming it's a very very close game, then I would say okay, this LSU team is 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 where we uh where we thought they might be, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I I think that's gonna be that's gonna be the key. I really want to see how they play, and I really want to see how they stay out of foul trouble because last time, um, they 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 gave. South Carolina are run for their money, absolutely. But in the end, Angel Reese got fouled out, and they lost. Would they have lost with Angel Reese is still in the game? Who knows? I don't know. Um, and yeah, so so for me, for me, it is if they do play each other, it's can Angel Reese stay out of foul trouble? Can Michaela Williams show up and be that Michaela Williams player that we saw earlier in the year? And it's about um, can Haley Van Lift do her thing? Now for for South Carolina, I think all South Carolina has to do is play their game, play play their game like they normally play it, and I think they got it. <laughs> uh, pl play play the game they normally like like Raven Johnson dishing out those passes, pow pow hitting those hitting those three point shots. It's about Bree Hall playing some lockdown defense. It's about Camila Cardoso blocking everything in, in the paint. It's about um, you know uh, Chloe Kitts getting a fadeaway shot or, or, or you know uh, operating near the basket and getting some buckets. Like it's, it's about them just playing their normal game. If if uh, if South Carolina is is locked in and focused, they they got the game. But if there's cracks in South Carolina, then there's an opportunity for LSU to to, to pull up with the win. But I I think it's likely that South Carolina will win. Um, because they're just. They're South Carolina. I, I mean, they're just they're just South Carolina. Um, Hogboss says, "Do you think South Carolina starting five is better than LSU um, as a team? Like as as a unit together? No, I think I think South Carolina has the best unit in women's college basketball. The best starting five unit in, in women's college. The way they play together is just it's a sight to behold." It's 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 a sight to behold. Now, individually, if you want to compare the talent individually of players, now nah, I think that's a different story. But as a as a unit, as as a as a as a team that, um, yeah, as as a unit, I think they're I think they're better. Ooh, uh, we got some news from Darnell. Darnell says it has been reported that Michaela Williams will not play in this week's SEC tournament. Um, let's, let's look at that up real quick. Sorry guys, I wanted to just look that up. All right, that is correct, guys. Uh, breaking, breaking news, breaking, breaking news. Uh, Michaela Williams will not, will not play in, um, in the SEC tournament. Now, um, I do want to I do want to do a, a, a screen screen share real quick so y'all can actually see the article for y'all sales. Um, 
But yeah, let let me know, guys. What what reaction do y'all have about the fact that uh, Michaela Williams will not be playing? I mean, it makes sense. They they want to make sure she's uh she's fully healthy for um for tournament play. It makes a lot of sense to me. Um, all right. So I do want to share my screen real quick and show y'all the, uh, I want to show y'all the article. Okay, guys, I'm almost done. Sorry about this. I'm working on a fly here, I'm trying to get this all set to go to be able to show y'all. All right. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. All right, guys, here is the article. Um, I hope you all can, uh, let me zoom in. I hope y'all, you all can read it. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Kim Mulkey did provide an update for, um, for, um, Michaela Williams. And this is from NOLA.com guys, NOLA.com. Um, it says Kim Mulkey said Thursday that she's still unsure if Michaela Williams will suit up on Friday for LSU's SEC tournament opener. Um, Michaela is a freshman guard who started the Tigers first 26, 29 games is nursing plantar fasciitis, which is the same, same thing that Haley Van Liff dealt with earlier, um, earlier this year. Uh, so she is dealing with plantar fasciitis on her foot on Sunday. She missed LSU's game, uh, over Kentucky in what Kim Mulkey calls a precautionary measure that will ensure that she is healthy. Uh, for the NCAA tournament. And uh, Kim says, in a perfect world, I'd like to rest her the whole tournament. Uh, but if I need to look down there and say, hey, can you go two or three minutes and uh, look at the trainer and say, hey, do you think it'll hurt anything? And just kind of go from there. So, so yeah, that is, that, that's kind of the news, guys. Um, I think that... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's gonna be interesting, uh, depending on if if Kim Mulkey feels like she needs, absolutely needs, uh, Michaela Williams to uh, to play to play in in, um, in in a game this week. Um, I think it's in it's in um, South Carolina's best, um, you know, uh, best interest to not have Michaela Williams play. Um, I think I think that would be uh, that would be in their best interest. Uh, but we'll see we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um, um, Kim Mulkey also said it's, it's just precautionary. I'm overly sensitive to uh, feet and backs, and it's just not something I'm going to take a chance on and pound on and step on. And, uh, you end up later having some kind of stress reaction or something. I'm not doing that. Okay. So yeah, that is, that's kind of the news guys. You know, I think that, you know, um, LSU is a team that has dealt with plantar, plantar fasciitis this fasciitis this year. I think that's one of the reasons why um, Haley Van Liff has had a sort of issue sort of getting acclimated at that point guard position because, because, because she, um, you know, had plantar fasciitis and she wasn't able to fully, fully uh, really get into her role because she was dealing with injury. And when you look at um, now with Michaela Williams dealing with plantar fasciitis, you don't want her to really play if you, if you could, if you can stand it, right. You, you, would, you'd want her to, to just rest, rest, rest. So that way you could try to go back to back. Cause if, cause if Michaela Williams flares it up even more and you can't go in the, uh, in the NCAA tournament, that's, I mean, that, that, you know, that wouldn't be helpful, right? You, you, you want to make sure that, you know, even if you lose, in the SEC tournament, you want to make sure that Michaela Williams stays as healthy as possible. 
so yeah, that is that is uh that is something. That is something. Um, Darnell says if they lose, uh, then they will fall uh, to that number five spot, which puts them in a place where they can't have home court for the first couple of games. I think as long as LSU makes it to the championship game uh, versus South Carolina, I think they're going to be a number three seed at least. Um, now, if they lose uh, to one of these other teams, I think that's a whole nother story, right? I think I think that's a whole nother story. So again, remember, guys, they do play um, they do play uh, Auburn tomorrow. So. So yeah, that that's something that's something to notice. Uh, to to note, they do play Auburn. Auburn's a good team, uh, but it's it's a winnable game without Michaela Williams. But as I always say, anybody can get got. Auburn could very well beat LSU. We'll see what happens. We will absolutely see what happens. But yeah, that's the news, guys. Uh, yeah, that is. <laughs> um. Bree Wayne says, not quite of blaming plantar fasciitis on Haley Van Lis point guard. But I mean, I'm saying it was a factor. Am I saying it was the primary factor? No, I don't think it was. I say it's a factor. Yeah. Because she wasn't able to get as many minutes um, and 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 sort of play her the game that she was trying to play. But I don't, I don't, I don't think, I do not think that was the primary factor. So no, that to me, that's. It's it's not an excuse. It's a it's just something to say, basically. <laughs> I'm just saying that they've dealt with this before. So we'll so we'll, so we'll see we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Everyone <laughs> says I can't win with <laughs> what? <laughs> um uh, Darnell says Auburn is smelling blood. <laughs> I mean, if if you're Auburn, you're like, hmm, this is looking pretty good. You're you're you know you're rubbing you're rubbing your hands together. You you doing you doing that Birdman thing where you you know you you rub you rubbing your hands. <laughs> I don't I don't know if y'all get if y'all get that Birdman reference. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Um, there is blood in the water. Yes, yeah, it, it is it is blood in the water. We'll see we'll see what um. We'll see what what Auburn can do. I mean, I you know as as I as y'all as I tell y'all, I would absolutely love it if if Auburn knocked down LSU because again, I don't care who actually wins. Um, I want to see good basketball and I want to see upsets. That's what I want. This is what March is made for. March is made for upsets. It is made for it. So you know, I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, JB says Auburn looked a little, uh, suspect today against a severely depleted Arkansas team. Yep. Uh, was a little concerning. Honesty, uh, Scott Grayson struggled too. LSU catching them at the right time, even without Michaela. I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> free smoke, free smoke. <laughs> Yes, 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 Bree Wayne. Free smoke, free smoke. That's that's what this is all about. I mean, you know, I don't care. All, all everybody can get got. I mean, <laughs> you know, everybody can get got. I'm just I'm just saying. You know, I I I don't care. You know, I I just want to see good basketball and I want to see upsets. That's what I want. It, it it could be it could be UConn getting got. It could be South Carolina getting got. It could be LSU getting got. It could be Iowa getting got. I don't care. I want to see great basketball. I want to see players who aren't supposed to step up, step up and win games for their team. And I want to be surprised at the end of the day. I want I want the NCAA championship to be a surprise. I, I, I want to be like, whoa, I didn't expect them to get this far. I didn't expect them to win it all. Like, you know. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Hog Boss says, I like how y'all be disrespected LSU talking about Auburn can beat them. But but Hog Boss, anybody can get got. Yes, Auburn can beat them. Will Auburn beat them? Not likely. Not likely. But can they get got? Yes, absolutely. They, they can get got. Uh, uh, South Car uh, uh, no, LSU is not a team that that is uh, infallible. They're not. You know, same thing for everybody else. You know, this isn't this isn't specific to LSU. This is specific to basketball. 
you know, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's specific to basketball. <laughs> that, that's what, that's what it's specific to. Um, uh, Janae says, uh, yeah, uh, Janae played a uh, good, uh, last game. Um, and it's funny how she has, yeah, yeah Janae Kent, yeah, has Janae, <laughs> the other Janae. <laughs> Um, uh, that's my name, but Del Rosario is elite, uh, so she needs, uh, some aggression, but I think they'll do good. I mean, Aaliyah Del Rosario can be a huge, huge, huge player for, for LSU, but also I've seen more fight with her. I have seen it and I, and I, and I do acknowledge that. I do appreciate that as just like, as a, as a, as a person who believes in, in her future abilities. Uh, but yeah, she just needs to continue to get more grit. She needs to continue to get more grit. Um, she needs to continue to get tough. She needs to get more aggressive. She has been, and I, and I, I keep continuing to see that she's she's getting better and better. But she needs more aggression, um, a lot, a lot more aggression. <laughs> Doctor Drew says, "Stop listening to the talking heads." Yeah, make make up your own mind. Yeah, that you know, I I am I am all for uh, the democratization of women's basketball opinions. Yeah, don't 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 listen don't listen um, to talking heads. Don't listen, you know, don't listen to every to the people who who are doing the analysis on TV. Don't listen don't listen to me. Make, listen and make up your own mind. Listen to me. Make up your own mind about about what you think because, you know, that's what it's all about, man. That that, that is what it's all about, you know. Um, let's see, let's see. All right. All right, guys. Uh <laughs> this is Sparta. <laughs> Next day, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I mean that, that's how that's how I that's 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 in my head, I'm envisioning that. This is Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> I really love talking to y'all. I I really do. I really really do. Um, yeah, y'all y'all be funny. Y'all be funny. Uh, Country says if Don stays with one lineup for longer stretches, we can smash anybody. That is true. That is very true. That is very 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 true. <laughs> I mean, blame, blame next day air, Wayne. Blame next day air. That, that was that was next day air right there. That that was. I mean, I just reacted to what next day air put in the chat. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Hogball says I can't wait until LSU wins it all and come on your show. I mean, hey, yeah, if if, if they win it all, I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm gonna give them the props. I'm gonna give them the props. That's for sure. You know, I um, like I'm again. I I don't care, but whoever makes it, you, hey, you you know this. You know this. Whoever whoever makes it far in the tournament, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna for sure. You know, be giving them their props all all along the way. You know, as as players as players step up, show up, show out. That's gonna be phenomenal to watch. If LSU wins it, goes back to back, man, y'all, y'all can't say nothing about Kim Mokey. <laughs> Including me. If 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 they if they if they uh win it all, baby, you can't say nothing. You can't say nothing to Kim Mokey. You can't say nothing to Angel Reese. You can't you can't say nothing to LSU <laughs> if if they if they win it all. You can't you can't say none. You can't say none. I'm, I'm I'm just saying you can't you can't say none. And and I, I I'm here for it. I'm here for it, man. I I am I am here for it, y'all. Here for it. <laughs> Next day, say I'm. 
Next day, Eric said, I'm not crazy, y'all. I was responding to Hog Boss. <laughs> Hog Boss says it's all fun and games. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's all for the love, for the love of basketball, you know. Also, Love and Basketball was a great was a great movie. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> Janae said, you a monkey going to curse out all her reporters. <laughs> she's going to do it in a very Southern nice way, I think. I think she, she, she's going she's gonna, to she's gonna, she's gonna have that sort of like bless your heart attitude. Uh, if, 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 uh, if LSU can win it all, she's going to have that, that bless your heart attitude. She... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what happens next says, uh, no, Quita, you are here for, for the upsets. Remember, I'm here for the upsets. Yes. But, but again, like I, I, I am, I, I would prefer an upset. <clears throat> if we don't get an upset, I am, I am absolutely covering whoever, whoever makes it as far. It doesn't matter who it is. If, if South Carolina wins it, Hey, you, you, you about to watch a whole bunch of videos talking about their, their plight to, to their championship um, from, from Camila Cardoso on down, all the players who helped to help to, uh, to secure that. I'm going to give them all their props. And it don't matter who it is. It could be Iowa. It could be like who, whoever it is. Yeah, of course, I do want upsets. But at the same time, give credit where credit is due. Give credit where credit is due. And, that, and that's what I do. Because, again, I, I don't totally care. <laughs> like this is, I mean, e even, even for the WNBA, that, that I really am a Sky fan, and I really do rock with the Chicago Sky, but when we were in the finals, y'all you, you, saw the videos I was putting out. You know, y'all saw it. I was, I was, uh, I was shouting out uh, the New York Liberty for doing their thing. I was shouting out the Las Vegas Aces. For, like, you know, I, I am, uh, I talk about everybody, y'all. I talk about everybody. And that's why, that's why um, I run the channel. I, I do the channel the way I do it. Because I know there's a lot of times people be, uh, people be covering certain stuff because they, they only want to cover the team that they like. And they only want to cover them in a certain way. And they feel like they can't say nothing. Um, I, I, hey, I, 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 I look at, I look at what happens. I look at what I'm seeing on the court. And I'm, and I'm, and I make my opinions. Even, even for the Chicago Sky, I, I call them out. I call them out when they, when they, when they crazy, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it all, man. I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't. Uh, yeah. Uh, Janae says, facts, people can't take this serious. Quita uh, supports all. Yeah, I do. I just want the game of women's basketball to grow. That's all I want. That's all I want. Like, I, I don't I don't totally care who who shines. I don't care who it is. I don't. I don't care if Oregon State uh, uh, ends up ends up winning. I think that would be huge for the game of women's basketball. I, th I think that would be phenomenal. I mean, I care in terms of like, I care, but like, but like, I whatever whatever grows the game, I'm down. I am down, down, down. Um, Bear says I would love to see LSU versus South Carolina in the yes, nah, baby, that would be a game. Whew. I would love to watch that. I absolutely would. Can y'all imagine the ratings for that game? The ratings would be through the roof. Y'all see, uh, y'all see this dog? Y'all see this dog right here? The dog sleeping. He, he, he act like he worked all day. He act like he worked all day and he ain't do nothing but sleep. Well, I, I left and, and, um, worked all day, come home, walk him. And now, and now he sleep. Now he sleep. Um... <laughs> Now he sleep. Uh, he know Kami Kai says. Period. Who did what up? He know Kami. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> what happens next is if South Carolina lose, I will go on social media fast till WNBA starts. 
<laughs> not a social media fast. I mean, it's probably better for you. It's probably you're probably gonna be better off if you do go on a social media fast. I think we all kind of need to go on a social media fast sometimes. <laughs> oh man. Emilio says, what about South Carolina? You said ain't nobody going to beat them. I mean, no, I, I said they can get got. South Carolina can, can get got, Emilio. Um, is it likely that they will get, get got? No. If I am on another team, do I want to play South Carolina? No. However, they can get got. I mean, they got got last year. Last year, I thought South Carolina was going to win the championship. And look what happened. I know South Carolina fans hate bringing that up. Y'all hate bring y'all hate when people bring that up, but it's true. You can get got. I don't care if you're the best team in the country. I don't care if you've if you won all your games this season. You can still get got. Is it likely that they will get got? No, I, I don't think it's likely at all. But can it happen? Yes, a hundred percent. It can happen. Um, Janae says I want the WNBA to surpass the NBA. I mean. Sure. I mean, I, I don't think of it as a competition. Like, I don't. Like, I, I don't think, um, I, I, I don't, like, sure, it would be, it would be fantastic if, if WNBA surpassed the NBA, but I don't totally think that that's the, that's not the goal to me. The goal to me is just to grow the game itself. Like, to, you know, I think, I think the NBA can continue to grow. And the WNBA can continue to grow. I, I, don't, I don't think it's 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 necessary for it to be sort of like a, a competition between the WNBA and NBA because like we're, it's different. It's a different sport. It's different. The game of women's basketball is played very differently than than men's basketball. You could just watch. You could watch an NBA game and then watch a WNBA game. You could tell it's different. You know, sure, the basics of the game is the same. You know, the hoop is the same and the court size is the same. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's the same, but it, it's 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 very different. And so I, I, don't, I don't care, honestly. You know, sure, it'd be great if, sure, if they've surpassed. But at the same time, I think the WNBA can win without it being a loss at all to the NBA and, the, and their fan base. Like, I, I, think, I think we all can eat. I, I am, maybe I'm naive, Maybe I'm naive on this, but I think we all can eat. I truly believe that, um, and and I think and I think that's the case for for women's basketball too. I think it's I think it's possible for you know um, Iowa to get a ton of attention, and that not to be a and, and that not to be a detriment to South Carolina, right? I, I think I think it's possible for 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 um, the different programs to get there to get the shine that they deserve and get bl plastered on everywhere and for it not to be a disservice um, to another team or, or another player or whatever um, that requires that uh, that that, that uh, certain decisions are made uh, but I, I do think everybody can win again maybe that's naive but I, that's what I, that's what I believe that is that is what I believe. Um, guys, I do, I do want to talk about, uh, you know, I, we, we kind of got derailed talking about, <laughs> talking about, uh, the SEC. I mean, you know, we kind of get derailed. <laughs> Jay said, Jay says, I don't believe that Queen is biased. Queen needs to stop hating. <laughs> I need to stop hating y'all. I, I hate too much. I hate too much. I just need to stop hating. <laughs> Um. Yeah, the NCAA, NCAA women's game is in a good space. It is. It is. It is. It absolutely is. He know, Kami Kai says he's exhausted. Yeah, this dog. This dog be acting like he be doing a whole bunch of stuff. He ain't work all day. He ain't do nothing. He get he got free food. You know, <laughs> says let him get his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> He act like it, man. And, uh, and the other dog is on the other couch. <laughs> Sleeping too. Y'all, y'all, these dogs don't, don't make no sense. These dogs don't make no sense. Uh, Nola Origin says, Iowa getting knocked out in the Sweet 16. Possibly. 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 <laughs> Michaela says, here comes the Iowa 8. <laughs> 
Michaela, it's like clockwork sometimes. It's like clockwork. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, country says, Queen of you being diplomatic. Haley Van Lift just has bad feet. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Gamecocks too much in the air with your state right now. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Uh, y'all, if y'all get that like button, that would be fan freaking tastic. Uh, please hit that like button. That'd be really awesome. Um, all right. So guys, I did just want to do a quick segue, uh, to talk about the news, uh, that happened that the news that dropped today. Um, there, there was some, uh, also guys, Fairfield just won today. Fairfield, Fairfield just won. The game just ended. Uh, 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 Fairfield, uh, Fairfield, the number twenty-five team in the, in the league, just won. All right, let's uh, let's talk about something that I thought was pretty. Uh, it was pretty impressive. It was pretty pretty impressive. So, guys, I do want to talk about the Las Vegas Aces. We're going to do a quick segue to the WNBA, and then we're going to move back to women's college basketball to talk about the other um, games that have happened. Um, yesterday and today. Um, we're going to just sort of talk about the Pac-12 as well because, yes, there's some more Pac-12 stuff that we, we need to talk about. Um, but, guys, I do want to talk about the fact that we have... Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Guys, uh, th there is a story uh, from frontofficesports.com that gave us some fantastic news, guys. Uh, the headline was Las Vegas Aces announced season tickets are sold out in apparent WNBA first. Like, now, y'all, when I saw this pop up my, on my feed today, I was like, what? This is freaking amazing. Let's go uh, Las Vegas Aces. Let, let's kind of let's kind of look at the article and let's talk about um, what it said. So. It said um, the Las Vegas Aces sold out of season tickets Thursday. The team confirmed to front office uh, sports and claims to be the first WNBA team to do so. So, yeah, from my knowledge, I have never been aware of another WNBA team that has done this. Um, and I think this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the Las Vegas Aces sold out season tickets with more than two months before the season starts. Um, because they have their home opener on May the 14th against Phoenix Mercury. That, that game is going to be a really good game. I'm just saying. That's, that game is going to be really, really good. The, the, the Phoenix Mercury is a very, very different team than they were last year. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, the Las, Vegas, Las Vegas Aces, they re-upped basically the, the entire roster of last season. And then they added, uh, they added, added Megan Gustafson. So, like, you know, they're looking, they're looking pretty good as well. Um... It says uh, the Aces uh, sold out. Uh, they they sold eight thousand six hundred tickets, uh, season tickets uh, for their arena. So their arena is not that big, right? They're they're on the smaller, smaller ish end of uh, WNBA arenas. So so a lot of you you have the likes of uh, the Phoenix Mercury, the likes of um, um, uh, the Seattle Storm, the Minnesota Lynx. The Los, uh, Los Angeles Sparks, the Indiana Fever. These are these are all teams that play in NBA sized arenas. So they're they're very large, very 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 large. And I think that uh, when we when we look at the Las Vegas Aces, they are on the smaller ish side of things with having a um, arena of ten thousand um, as as the, as the capacity. And what this means is it means that there's that the Las Vegas Aces games feels a lot more intimate and it feels fun and, and they can, and they can pack out the, the space. So yeah, they sold 8,600 season tickets. Um, and again, the arena seats around 10,000, uh, the lowest price season ticket was $200, which made up 40% of season ticket sales per the team. So it, it clearly, you know, they, they, they were priced at a very affordable cost they were very very affordable for fans which you know i, I think i think when you, when you talk about when you talk about the wnba um i think that is something that the wnba has over just about every other sport uh, with the exception of uh, i think like when it when it comes to, to the wnba and when it comes to the nwsl 
it's pretty affordable to go to games. It's very affordable. And so shout out to uh, the Las Vegas Aces and um, shout out to Mark Davis for making um, the tickets affordable. Um, so, so yeah, they uh, the tickets are, you know, about $15 a game. Um, so not bad at all. And the, game, the tickets were about $10 last year uh, for the Las Vegas Aces, which is like crazy affordable. Um, so yeah, guys, that that's that's sort of the news, guys. Um, I, I I thought I thought that was pretty pretty awesome. Um, the WNBA has been on the rise, and it, and it continues to be on the rise. We we have a uh, viewership numbers up. We have um, you know um, we have a lot of great stuff happening. So so the article continues to say uh, that the WNBA is already coming off of earning its best attendance and viewership in decades last summer, um, and it has gotten even more boosts in the off season. We all know that we saw Sabrina Ionescu play against Steph Curry. Um, that was a pretty pretty awesome. Uh, um, three point battle that they had. Of course, Steph Curry won, but I thought that Sabrina had a great showing and it was just more visibility for the WNBA. And that's what the WNBA needs, right? Um, as we head into the WNBA draft for the season, um, y'all, I believe, I believe, I believe the, um, the, the draft, um, the tickets to actually see the draft. I believe that is actually sold out now. Um, and season tickets for the Indiana Fever is up, up big time, right? Um, and and it's showing when um, you know Indiana is going to be on the road. Like you see this right here. It says it says the get-in rate for a Chicago Sky game is twenty-five dollars or less. But when the Fever comes to town, the cheapest seat is three hundred and twenty dollars. And y'all, I'm happy. I got season tickets for the Sky, uh, so I, I I got my tickets already locked in. But I think this is just we're in the we're in the golden age of women of women's basketball right now. Maybe even women's sports. Maybe even women's sports right now. You see the likes of um, AU doing very well, right? Um, they got they got softball. They got um, you know um, they got lacrosse, I believe. Um, you you see the likes of the this new this new volleyball league that started up, and they're looking very good. I I, I think this is we're in the golden age of, of women's sports. You, you look at, you look at the NWSL, the NWSL has had a lot of growth. They've had a lot of expansion teams and, and those teams are successful. You look at, you look at women's soccer worldwide. Numbers are looking good. I think that, um, you know, look at the WNBA numbers are rising. Attendance is, is going up. You see, you see, uh, you see, um, not not just attendance, ratings is going up. You look at you look at the fact that we have a we have a women's hockey league that's you know that's 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 trying to to make it. This is the heyday for women's sports, and I just love it as a, as a person who watches. Um, yes, my primary sports is women's basketball, and second to that is uh, women's soccer, and then third is the NFL and whatnot, and then we kind of go from there. Um, but my point is. Women's sports is here and we're not going anywhere. And, and as we, and as we continue to, to find different ways to grow the game with, with the WNBA next season, it's going to be all about Caitlin Clark. And I'm, I'm personally, I'm fine with it. I, I, I love it. I think it's going to continue to help grow the game. When you look at, when you look at volleyball, the volleyball um, season, this new volleyball league, it was spurred on by massive, Ratings for women's uh, college volleyball, massive attendance numbers for women's college basketball, uh, college volleyball, and then they move that into now this new league and the the Atlanta volleyball team. I, I've been seeing a lot of their stuff, um, and and they're looking good. I, 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 we're in the heyday of women's sports, and as as a as a fan of women's sports, as someone who, um, for the most part, will support. A, a, a women's sports team over a men's support, uh, sports team, not not because I think it's better. I I just personally find it more entertaining. I like I I love it, <laughs> and I and I just think it's, I think this is great. Like I just, I don't know. I am just very very happy for women's sports. Um, I think we're in a great spot, and I I just can't wait to see future growth, and I can't wait to see. Uh, and also I I can't wait to see the point where we have. What, what, what this channel, what this community is for women's basketball, 
I want to see the day where I can, I can go on YouTube and watch and, and join and join a community for women's soccer. I want to see, I want to see the day where I can, I can join a community for women's softball. Right. I, 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 I want that. Like, yes, there's coverage on, on ESPN, there's coverage on, on the TV state, but, but I feel like, I feel like, you know, you've made it when you have an ecosystem on YouTube to support the thing. Right. Um, so I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much, uh, I'm very much interested to see that day. And of course this channel will always be about women's basketball, but like, you know, I also freaking love women's soccer. <laughs> and also guys, i this is going to be the extent of my um, soccer talk on this, on this channel. Um, uh, I, I know y'all want to talk about women's basketball and that's what we here for, but I do have to just do a quick segue. Shout out to Alyssa Nair, my favorite goalie. Um, the goalie of the Chicago Red Stars who saved the day for the United States. Um, y'all, Alyssa Nair is goalie number one for Team USA. She has been rocking out and saving, saving the Red Stars butt for a long time. Um, and y'all, she saved the day. Uh, so, so if y'all don't know, um, the women's national team played, um, played Canada and, uh, y'all, this game went to, went to penalty kicks. The game, they're in the, they're in, they're in, um, CONCACAF right now. So if you don't know, um, the U S is in CONCACAF and they need to win it is <laughs> the CONCACAF gold cup uh, happening right now. And, um, it was two to two went to overtime. I mean, we went to penalty kicks and y'all, not only, not only did my goalie, not only did my goalie, Alyssa Nair, not only did she, uh, not only was she able to, uh, you know, block some penalty shots, y'all, she made a penalty shot. You don't see goalies uh, doing penalty kicks like that. Cause for the most part, goalies are terrible at penalty kicks. Absolutely terrible. Uh, but, 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 but yeah, she, she did her thing. She did her thing. So shout out, shout out to Alyssa Nair. Shout out to Alyssa Nair. That's, that's my goalie. You know, I, I do get, I, you know, not only am I a season ticket holder for the Chicago Sky, I'm a season ticket holder for the Chicago Red Stars. Cause we, we, uh, we rocking over here. We rocking over here. We, and when, and when Chicago gets a, gets a volleyball team, I'm supporting that too. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm down for it, man. I'm down for it. So yeah, I, I did just want to say that. Shout out to a listener. Um, she, she be doing her thing, y'all. She be doing her thing. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see what y'all got to say. Yes, Brie Wayne. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. She did. She absolutely did. Uh, you know, Comic Guy says soccer, you mean football? Yes. Football. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, for, for, uh, for not, uh, like, people who are outside of American, and I've actually seen a lot of Americans starting to call soccer football, too. It, it gets confusing, I think, because then, then like, okay, well, what do you call what do you call football? Football, like, what is that? Is that like American football, and then um, soccer is just regular football? Like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, y'all. Um, uh, Didi said, <laughs> "What up, Didi in Tennessee?" Uh, Didi says, "Queen had never been a soccer fan, uh, be, but because you're so tough with women, women's basketball, I would check it out. Yes, please check it out, please." Please check it out. Like, like you won't be disappointed. There are there are women's uh, NWSL teams all over the country. Um, I highly highly encourage y'all to go to a game. Highly encourage it. Um, if y'all live in an area that has um, that has a women's the women's professional volleyball team, I highly recommend y'all go to that. Um, just support women's women's sports. Support women's sports. That's 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 what it's all about. Um. All right, guys, that, that, that concludes, that concludes today's non-basketball talk, non-women's basketball talk. That, that concludes it. All right. Um, and now we're going to go back to women's, <laughs> women's basketball, because that is what we are here for. And, um, uh, for those who, who like, are like, will she shut up about women's soccer? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Well, we are, 
we are moving on. We are moving on because again, that is what that is what this uh this uh this show is all about. Oh, but also, if y'all if y'all actually do want commentary about um other women's sports, um let me know. Um maybe I'll make another channel about it. Uh but yeah. Maybe I maybe I'll make another channel. <laughs> Why is there LeBron James hating in the chat? <laughs> Y'all, why 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 is there LeBron James hating in the chat? Like what what's what's going on? What's going on? What's going on with you? What's going on? Uh what's happening next says, uh, I love it when your accent comes out. I have an accent? Do I really have an accent? Like I, I feel like I, I feel like I feel like I have like a like a very neutral I don't think I have an accent. I don't know. What what accent do I have? Like I don't know. <laughs> uh Hassan says Aliyah Matharu is balling out for Florida. Let's do it. Let's do a check into that um uh into that uh Vanderbilt Florida game. That game is happening right now. So we are in the fourth quarter with three minute three minutes and twenty five seconds left to go. And uh and uh um Florida is winning fifty eight to forty eight by Vanderbilt. Um, I of course am not watching that game right now because I'm on the live stream. So I can, I can let you all know kind of what's happening with the box score. Um, but can't really give, uh, whoa, y'all Aliyah Matharu has 33 points. Oh my goodness. Let's go Aliyah Matharu. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So yeah, let, 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 let's get into this guys. Um, 58, 48 and, uh, Y'all, Aliyah Matharu. <laughs> Y'all, she looking pretty good out there. She looking pretty good. Three of six from the three-point line. Um, 13 of 23 overall. Eight rebounds. Um, she's staying out of foul trouble with only three fouls. <sighs> Shout out! Shout out to Aliyah Matharu. Y'all, I I, I got to watch this game um, later today. I got I got to watch this. Like I. I really do like Aaliyah Matharu. Um, I really do. And, uh, you know, shout out to her for balling. Um, all right, yeah, so that's that's the, that's the quick check-in of, of that game. Um, yeah, it looks like, looks like, uh, looks like Florida's gonna, gonna finish it out. Looks like Florida's gonna finish it out. Um, and, and get that dub. Um, guys, here's, here's some updates for you all on, on games that you all should be watching out for today. So um, at at uh guys we have uh Arizona playing USC right now. Uh so so Arizona is playing USC. Um we we are we are in the second quarter at the basically at the end of the second quarter, 12 seconds left to go. Um USC is winning 30 to 25. Um now I I do I absolutely see uh, uh, USC coming out on top. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty close game, but I, I do see, I do see them coming out on top and, 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 and sort of making it pretty far in the Pac-12 tournament. But we are in the quarterfinals for the Pac-12 and, uh, USC is beating Arizona right now. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens from here, but, but yeah, that, that is, that is what's happening so far. Um, guys, in, in other, in other news, um, Stanford did beat Cal today. Um, Stanford beat them pretty badly, uh, 71 to 57. And y'all, Cameron Brink didn't have a great game at all. But if y'all don't know, now you know there is there is a girl. And her name is Kiki. Kiki Irafin, who showed up and showed out for um Stanford. I mean, not not that Cameron Brink didn't have a had a had a bad I mean, she wasn't Cameron Brink wasn't efficient. That's what I'm trying to say. But Kiki Irafin is a player that I have enjoyed thoroughly watching her play this year. Like she has been such a fun player to watch um, because when when Cameron Brink has these games of her being sort of inefficient, you have Kiki Ira often who just picks up the slack, right? She was she was 11 for 14 today, um, 28 points, 18 rebounds, five assists, y'all, five assists. So y'all y'all the thing the thing about the thing about her is um, yeah, not only, not only can she, uh, not only can she score, not only, not only can she rebound, 
But y'all, she led the team in assists today. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Uh, Kiki Air often is that girl, and I am, I am thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying her playing for um, for Stanford because she's just she's a fun player to watch. And also, guys, she's a junior, so she'll be back next year. She will be, she will be back next year, and um, I am, I am looking forward to it. I really am. Oh, we got a super chat. Uh, let's let's see the, let's see the super chat. Um. Wait, actually, I read that one. Oh, uh, Jay, th thank you so much, Jay, for the super chat. Jay says, Quita, you are okay with me. G-Y-L. Um, I don't know what that means. G-Y-L, let's go South Carolina. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Jay. I, I assume you're a South Carolina fan, I assume. But what is, uh, what is G-Y-L? I think this may be another one of those things where, like, it's obvious to everybody else what that, what that is, but I, I don't know what that is. What is G-Y-L? Good... Y L. I don't know. Yeah, what <laughs> Clar clarification. <laughs> clarification. Um, but uh, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jay, for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Oh, Miss Drama Queen says it's a three point game between Florida and Vanderbilt. Guys, let's uh let's hop in that game real quick and see let's see what let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Um let, let me let me just find the game real quick. All right, guys, uh, we have uh, 50 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, 50, 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and uh, Florida is winning 60 to 57. Looks like they may pull this out. But also, this game is way closer than I was expecting. Shout out to Vanderbilt, man. Shout out to Vanderbilt for giving uh, Florida the Florida Gators a run for their money. <laughs> you know, Kami Kai says, I don't I don't be knowing what them abbreviations mean either. <laughs> uh Kyra says that GYL looks sus. What does it mean? Does, does someone tell me? I feel I feel like so like I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm not I'm not with it. Like I, I don't I don't know uh I don't know man. I, I guess I'm I guess I'm not with the times. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I feel I feel like I feel like my my uh, my parents where they're like what what is that <laughs> is that what the youngins say nowadays I don't know is that what the youngins say uh, Dee Dee says yes you have an accent a little New York Philly ish <laughs> really I sound I, I sound a little a little like a uh, like a uh, New York and Philly. I don't know. I, I feel like I, I've been to New York once. I've been to Philly once, um, but uh, Carmela says uh, a little accent with certain words. Okay, okay. Doctor Drew says Utah girls are not a pushover. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They are not pushovers. So y'all, y'all, uh, Utah is. <laughs> Utah is similar to um, to UNC a little bit for me. Um, guys, that, that Utah game, Utah do they do play today? They play UCLA, and y'all, this could be this could very well be a game that UCLA gets got because Utah is a team that if Peely is on. Oh, if Peely is on and, and um and and they are able to hit they uh they're able to hit their um three pointers, y'all you don't want to mess with Utah either. You don't want to mess with Utah because you're gonna see Peely dominate in the post. But also, uh, for for those for those who who don't know about Utah and you haven't watched a Utah game, um, let's uh. Let, let's talk about Utah real quick. So Utah is a team that does two things on offense. Two. That's it. So so their their first their first their first first thing is to see can we get a three point shot 
Second thing, if we can't get a three-point shot, let's get it in the paint. That's it. That's all that's all they're trying for. It's it's a very analytic analytically based team that is all about three-point shot, paint shot. No 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 mid-range jumpers. No mid-range jumpers, no real no real uh free throw jumpers. It, it's it's three-point shot or in the paint. And I think and I think that's kind of why um they're so confusing is because they can be really, really off and bad, or they can they can be really on and dominate. Like I, it, it's it's one of the other. It's it's one of the other for Utah, and they are a team that can absolutely get a lot of other teams. I can absolutely see a situation where Lauren Betts, um and UCLA get got to Alyssa Peely and Utah. I, I could I could absolutely see it. I can absolutely see it. And you know, I, I, I think it's just, you know, it's one of those things that continues to make the game of women's basketball really fun. It it, it it makes the game of women's basketball very, very fun. Yo, oh, it is a one point game. All right, Vanderbilt is within one point. Let's uh actually Here's here's what I'll do. I'll actually put that game up. Um, well, we can see the game cast. All right, um, let let's do that because I, I I do want to you know keep keep ta keep tabs on this game. All right, there we go. All right, so so uh, we have 29 seconds left in the game. Uh, Vanderbilt is only down by one point. Like y'all again. I, I got I got to watch this game after after it's over because again I'm talking to y'all so I can't. I can't, um, I can't, um, uh, you know, wa watch it while, while I'm talking to y'all. Um, but I gotta, I gotta watch this later because shout out to Vanderbilt, man. Shout out to Vanderbilt. Like what? I, I just can't believe it. Um, I, I, I cannot, I cannot believe it. Um, Max says, I haven't watched Vandy women all this year. How are they? They're not good. They're not very good. No, uh, which is why I am I am surprised <laughs> by this. Um, yeah, they're 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 not very good. Uh, uh, Charlie uh, says Peely is five ten. Yes, she is. Uh, she's listed at I think she's listed at like six foot, but yeah, she's five ten. She's she's a shorty. Or she, I mean, no, she's, she's listed at like six foot, six foot one, something like that. But she's, the real height is 5'10". She is not, she's not six feet, feet. She's not. I don't know why they have her at a higher, like at a higher height, uh, height. Uh, but yeah, she's, she's not, she's not six foot. Um, but yeah, she's 5'10". And she is, that girl's strong. Straight up strong, um, and you know, if if uh, if the Chicago Sky can make it work, I would love to see Alyssa P. Lee with the Chicago Sky. Like I, I think I think she's just she's very undersized, uh, and, I, and and I, and I wouldn't put her as a as a um, as a um, as a uh, Post player, I, th I think I think she could actually make it as a small forward, uh, a very undersized small forward, but she could play some defense. So I, I think she I think she could make it work. Um, Art of free speech says Sarah Strong actually reminds me of Peely a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Paris says anybody can get guy. You know what time it is? Yeah. All right. So uh, so yeah. Uh, looks like. Uh, Looks like they are now up um, by two points now. So we'll see. Timeout. Vanderbilt, 21 seconds left to go in the game. Yeah, anybody can get got. You know, if a hey, if 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 Vanderbilt can um, if Vanderbilt can make it happen, man, they need to. Too bad they're too bad they're not at home. I was gonna say this this will be a perfect opportunity to storm the field. This will be a perfect opportunity to storm the field. Um, but anyway, 
I mean, I, I, I gotta watch it, man. Like this, y'all. I just, I gotta watch it. Uh, Kyra says, just had a Ryan Howard spotting. Where? Uh, where did you have a Ryan Howard spotting? Uh, Michaela, yeah, I did. I did think uh, Vanderbilt was gonna lose. I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I thought, I thought they were gonna lose. They're a good team, though. They're a really good team, a really, really, really good team. But I thought they were gonna lose. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, uh, and 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 I initially thought that that Peely was uh, six foot, but she, I, I saw an interview that she did, and she was like, um, "Yeah, I'm five ten. <laughs> yeah, Michaela. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bree Wayne says, "Quita, do you think Camilla is going to Chicago Sky? No, I don't." I don't think I don't think she's going to Chicago Sky, uh, because I think um, sure if if the Chicago Sky wants to get a um, if you want to get a post player you do that you you do that with your second first round pick for the third pick. Um, so here here's the two positions where I think the Chicago Sky needs to improve. One, you need a uh, a post player for the future. That's that's who you need. You you know you need a post player for the future. Yes, yes, we have Izzy. Yes, and I like Izzy. I do. Uh, I do like Izzy. Um, yes, we have Elizabeth Williams. I like I like Elizabeth Williams. But you need the next generation of post players. You you need somebody like that for the Chicago Sky. So that that's one position that they need. And two, they need a. Um, Game, guys, game is basically over. Uh, 62-59. Uh, Florida. Um, Florida won the game. Bing, bing, bing. Um, Florida won the game. Um, anyway. Uh, you know, if someone if someone mentions the Chicago Sky, I got I gotta I gotta uh, go on a go on a sky rant. So anyway, to answer your question, Bree Lane, um, I don't think I don't think she's going with the sky. Um, the sky needs a post player. Yes. Um, for the next generation, but they also need a um, a replacement for Clea Copper, right? They need a replacer for for Clea Copper, and I think that um, Rakia Jackson is that. So I, when I first found out about the thir the third pick in the in the draft, I was like, oh, Rakia Jackson. Um, so, so yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, Bree Wayne says Vandy got got. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Paris says, so who is uh, so who's Florida about to play? So, uh, Florida is going to go on to play Ole Miss. So I do have to put a, a X in Vanderbilt's name. Um, uh, Florida is going to play Ole Miss. All right. Hopefully that 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 answers your question. Um, Mark says so can Peely. Um, so can Peely what? Uh, please, uh, that's not Mark, Mac, <laughs> Mac, so can Peely what? Um, AL says Chicago Sky should pick Amor or in Kidley. I might be biased. No, we don't need Georgia Amor. And the reason why I said that, I really like Georgia Amor. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. But. We're good at the point guard position. We don't need it. Uh, we we do not need it. And I I I don't think like Georgia Amore is a fantastic point guard. I don't know about her just being a sole just shooting guard. So I, I I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So uh so I sure I would I would I think I think she she has a lot of talent. However, the Chicago Sky when it comes to the point guard position. Our starting point guard is um, our starting point guard is uh, Dana Evans. Dana Evans is my favorite player. 
Um, she is she is the future of the sky. She is the now of the Chicago sky. And I, I think I think there there needs to not be any anything in her way from being the starting point guard for the Chicago sky. Um, I, I also, you know, they also got Lindsay Allen in, in the building, um, now for, for, um, for, uh, for the Chicago sky. We don't need, we don't need nothing else. We good. Dana Evans is our starter. Bring Lindsay Allen off the bench. We good. Georgia Amore is, is a, is a really good player. And I, and I, 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 I would, would hate for them to draft her for her just to sit. Cause she ain't starting over Dana Evans. She ain't starting over Dana Evans. Uh-uh. Uh, but yeah, I I I am very biased towards Dana Evans. <laughs> she, she is she is the future uh of the Chicago Sky. She is the now of the Chicago Sky. And I and I think this is her opportunity to actually fully take this on. I, I think she has been um relegated to the backseat for far too long in Chicago. Far, far, far too long, and I don't like it. I don't. Um, I, I think I think um, there were several times when in the past James Wade would look over Dana Evans, and I, I I didn't appreciate it because Dana Evans when she comes in the game she brings spark she brings she brings a, a defensive intensity she brings offensive firepower she has a she has court vision, um, she's great, uh, and and there and there were a lot of times where. Um, where she wouldn't, she wouldn't get in, right? She she wouldn't get opportunities, um, and you know, first it was because of Courtney Vandersloot. Then last year it was because of Courtney Williams. I like Courtney Williams, I do, but I I, I like Dana Evans more. <laughs> I like Dana Evans more. I want and I wanted Dana Evans to be in the game. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm just saying I, I am, I am very biased in this, in this, in this damn. And I will, I will admit that I will admit that guys, but yeah, we, we team Danny Evans here. Nah, we don't, we don't need Jojo anymore. Is she, is she phenomenal? Yes. You know, I, I, I think there's a, there's a bunch of other teams that need a point guard, um, that, that can use the likes of Georgia Amor as, as a player who's coming off the bench. Um, but, but, but nah, we, we good, we good over here. We good over here. We need, we need a small fort and we need a post player. That's what we need. That, that is what we need. And that's what we should use our, our, uh, our, our picks to, to do. That is, that is what we, what we should use our picks to do. Um, so yeah, yeah, we, we, we team, we team Dana Evans on here, over here. And the fan, the, hey, the Chicago Sky fans. If there is one player we root for more than anybody else, it's Dana Evans. If if there is one, if there is one player we root for, ever since she came, ever ever since um uh they 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 traded her, they they got her they got her to the team. Um ever since. Um it was the moment that solidified Dana Evans for Sky fans is uh is in the in the um it was in the playoffs when we when we won the championship, it was in the playoffs. And um, Dana Evans had, I think it was like, it was either two or three back-to-back threes. And I was, I was, it was at home and I was, I was there and I was, ooh, we went crazy for Dana. It, it was, ever since then, I was like, yeah, Dana Evans is my, is my player. That's my player. I, uh, hopefully, hopefully eventually I get to meet her because that, that, that's my player right there. Dana freaking Evans. That's, that's my player. Um... But yeah, but yeah, um, so yeah, uh, we, Sky fans, we, we, we go hard for Dana Evans. We, we go hard. We go hard. Um, so yeah, no, we don't need a point guard. No, that, that is my long way of saying, no, we don't need a point guard. No, please, 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 Chicago Sky, do not draft a point guard. We don't need it. We good over here. Unless Dana gets hurt, which hopefully she won't. Unless she gets hurt, we good. We good over here. All right, y'all. I do want to. Um, I do want to give another another update. <laughs> uh, another update for y'all. Another update for y'all. Um, yeah, yeah. This one right here. 
this one, this one right here, uh, Arizona is now tied with USC. Wow, 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 wow. All right, let, let's uh, let's get into the box score real quick because. Um... Wow, Juju has three fouls right now. Third quarter, three fouls. That is not good. That is not good. That is that is that is not good. Um shout out to uh whew, Cunningham got 12 points. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. We'll keep monitoring it. We we will uh we will keep monitoring it. Um yeah, we'll we'll yeah, we'll see what happens. There's some there's some cracks in the armor uh against uh against um USC. But I will say this, I will say this. Uh uh they I believe they played each other twice. The first time uh USC won handedly against Arizona. The last game that they played against Arizona was like a week ago, I think. And um that one USC barely won. They barely won that game. Um uh, the one, I think it was last week uh, that they played against uh, Arizona. They barely won. So, so yeah, they they won that game by like two points. So, so yeah, uh, Arizona is not a bad team. It's just that Arizona is a team that sure can sort of give you a run for your money, kind of, but they never can pull it out and like get the dub. Or that that that's an issue that they have. Um, that they have they have sat, they have they have had some really good games this season. Um, but also, they've had some really bad games this season as well. Um, oh, there's some talk about there's some talk about uh, the pay for the WNBA rookies. Yeah, I mean the r rookies don't get get, a pay, get paid a bunch. Um, they don't they don't get paid a bunch. Um, so guys, uh, I could actually pull it up how much they get paid so we so we know for sure. Um, I, I can I can pull it up so we can so we can actually we can actually see it. Um, um and so actually let's let's actually take a look at um hopefully y'all can see this. Okay, let's let's take a look at the Chicago sky. Um, that's a huge ad. Okay, 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 guys. We are not getting tacos or whatever. Whatever this is for. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's take a, let's take a look at the Chicago sky. So this is a uh, courtesy of Her Hoop Steps, y'all. If y'all want to know salaries, if y'all want to know um, rosters, whatever y'all want to know, Her Hoop Stats is it's exactly that. It's Her Hoop Stats. It's 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 a great reference. It's a great place to go to to find out um, uh, financial things related to the WNBA. They also do college basketball as well, but like their WNBA stuff is top notch, top notch. Shout out to the people over at Her Hoop Stats. Uh, so if we look at this, um, we see that um, that uh, Dana Evans is on a rookie scale, and um, last season she got paid seventy eight thousand dollars. All right, or I'm sorry, this this year she's gonna get paid seventy eight thousand dollars. Uh, so yeah, that's it. It's not a ton that uh, that rookies get paid, um, and, and we can we can actually look at uh, we can actually look at um, uh, Indiana. So we see Aaliyah Boston's as well. Um, so Aaliyah Boston, this is her second year in the WNBA, and she's getting seventy. She's going to get seventy five thousand. So the the reason why the the scale is a little bit different is because Aaliyah Boston was number one pick. So she started. She's gonna start off making seventy five in her second year. Um, Dana Evans has been in WNBA for for a bit, um, and and next season, um, Aaliyah is gonna make 80, 80, 83 and then keep going up. And that and that's because she was the number one pick. So it, it's it's a slightly different scale depending on where you were picked. Um, but but yes, yeah, it's, it's not that high. It's not that high. But you know, it is what it is. I I, I think I think uh, I think if. Um, if us as fans 
uh, don't like that it's that low, I think uh, I think what we got to do is buy tickets. I think we got got to buy merch. I think we have to support uh, the WNBA. We have to support these players. I think the only the only way they they can get paid more money is if uh, more people go to games. You know, that that's the that's the only way. More people have to go to games, and um, then you'll see numbers go up, right? Um, goodness rated says Reese is worth $2 million. The most WNBA players is making a nurse salary at two. Yeah. But the, but the thing is also you, you, you still can get your deals. You still can have your separate deals. Yes. The salary is not that high, but like Aaliyah boss is making bank because not only is she, uh, is she, um, playing for, um, for, uh, Indiana and making, you know, what is that? $75,000 this upcoming year, she's also working for NBC and, and Peacock and Big Ten and making and making money, right? She's also she also has sponsorship deals. You know, she's she's also doing other stuff. So there is other ways to make money. However, if us as fans don't like the fact that Aaliyah Boston, the number one pick in the WNBA draft last season, is only getting paid seventy five thousand dollars, let's buy some freaking tickets. Let's, let's buy some tickets, man. Like I, you know, I I am a person who, uh, for the most part, like before I start to like complain or whatever, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is, and I've been doing that, right? And I I not only do I buy tickets, I also buy merch. I got Dana's Dana Evans jersey hanging up in my closet, you know, because I'm like, you know, I'm like, hey. It, I can't. I can't claim that I that I support this player. I can't claim that I support the league. I can't claim that I I, I support this stuff. And I don't have merch. I have I have bought tons and tons of WNBA clothing. I have enough sky tops to last me an entire week. I have I I have bought so much stuff because it's not just about repping it physically and having it on your body. It's also financially supporting. You know, I, I, you know, I, I probably could figure out a way to, 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 um, to get some sort of press thing to get, to get free tickets to Sky Games. I probably could if I really wanted to, but also I want to financially support, you know, I, I, I want to, uh, I want to ensure, I want to ensure that money is flowing through the WNBA. You know, I, I, I want to make sure that happens. And, and the only way that happens is, is if us as fans put our money where our mouth is and, and support. Um, sure, it's not the most in the, more, in the world, but like, I, I mean, 80000 is a lot of money. I'm just, I, you know, so, you know, um, uh, $75,000 is a lot of money. Sure, it's not, as, it's not as much as NBA players are making, but like, it, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. So I I mean I mean you know it it we, we can't act like it's nothing because it because most of America doesn't make that I, I I don't believe most Americans make that so you know I I think uh, I think I think that that's great but but again if we don't think this is enough if we want players to have uh, more salary, if we want them to prioritize the WNBA, if we want them to fly on charter, if we want them to do all this great stuff, fantastic. Where's the money coming from? It's coming from you as fans. It's coming from us as fans. That's where it's coming from. The money doesn't come out of nowhere. We have to, we have to support we have to support and put our money where our mouth is. We can't just complain and and and, and be like, oh, uh, and I, and this is not. I'm not saying you guys are doing this. I'm just saying I I, I have seen so many women's basketball fans. Well, all all they do is just complain. Oh, this isn't enough money. Oh, this is terrible. What? Well, are you are you are you bu are you buying tickets, or are you just are or are you asking for free tickets all the time? You know, are you asking for free tickets and are you asking for uh you're asking for everybody to cover it. And you're you're asking you're asking for these players to get 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 uh paid uh quote unquote what you think they're worth, so put your money where your mouth is, man. Like I don't have a I don't have a ton of money, but I I I I put my money where my mouth is. 
I love the WNBA. I support the WNBA. I love the NWSL. I support the, w the NWSL. I buy merch. I buy jerseys. I buy season tickets. And I, and I, I put my money where my mouth is. And I think it's important for us all, if we say we love this stuff, if you say you're a women's basketball fan, what, and, and, and this is not me saying that people who are not financially able to, and I understand that, if you're not financially able to, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Like this is not, this is not me saying that, that you must do this. No, I'm saying if you are financially able and you're not doing it, what are you talking about? Like, like stop. You can't you can't expect other people to uh, you can't expect these these uh, corporations and um, you know they want to they want to turn a profit they they want to and in order for them in order for the league to continue to run and in order for the league to continue to grow and in order for us to get more teams we have to to put our money where our mouth is and I I I, th I think as fans we j we just we have to do it. We have we have to do it because the game deserves to grow, but it only grows if we water it. We water it by our money. That's how we water the game. So, uh, so that that's what it takes. That's what it takes. That's how the NBA grew. Fan support. Fan support. That that that's that's what it is. Fan support. Um. Watching the games on TV. If you can't, if you can't pay to go to the game, it don't matter if you busy doing other stuff. Make sure to turn on your TV and watch it. You know, when you see when you see stuff posted on social media from different sports, uh, uh, like WNBA has posted something or whatever, liking it, sharing it, talking about it, telling telling your friends about it, telling your friends, hey, you want to go to a game with me? Hey, I, uh, the the you know. The sky is playing, blah, blah, blah. You want to go? Introducing other people to the game. That, that, that's how we grow the game. It's, it's not just by, you know, talking about, oh, they need to get paid more. Oh, this, oh, this, oh, this is so terrible. What? Well, are you putting your money where your mouth is? And if you are, okay. I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing to say to you if you are. If you're one of those people who are, who are, who are um, you know, um, sort of uh, complaining and talking about like all the stuff that the WNBA needs to do and all this other stuff and, and in terms of pay and whatnot, and, you're, and you are financially supporting the WNBA, you are, you do have six season ticks, you do have, okay, whatever, I, you got an argument. But the people who don't and they just talking, you can't, you can't expect people to support something and, and believe in something that you don't support. I'm just saying, you know, the the best uh, the best uh, car salesman is the per, is the is the salesman who has the car. They have the car they're trying to sell you, and they can say, "I know this works. I know this is awesome because I I I, use, I I have put my money behind it. That's how much I believe in this product, and that and for me, that's women's basketball for me. That is women's basketball for me." I believe in it so much. I have, for several years, I've put I put my money I put my money in, in in for it. When I was younger, I couldn't afford tickets. You know, I, I once a year I, I would go to a game because that would be that would be my birthday present. I would I would ask, can for my birthday can I go to a sky game? Because we couldn't we couldn't go we couldn't you know, even though it was affordable, it still it still was out of our reach. And when I got a job. When I started making some money, okay, five day, five 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 game passes, um, buy supplemental tickets here and there until I was able to to get season tickets, and then I'm not stopping from here on out. I I I'm I'm a season ticket holder for forever, and if I move somewhere else, I'm be a season ticket holder of that of that one too. It's about growing the game, and the way that we grow the game is for us to financially support it first. And then talk about it to others. But uh, but yeah, I I am yeah I'm I'm an action based person. I'm not gonna before I before I tell somebody something. I'm I, I better do it myself before I tell somebody else to do something. 
Um, let's see, let's see, let's see what y'all got. I, I, I am so sorry, for, guys, for this. That was a huge rant. I'm sorry. I got I got on my soapbox and I just couldn't stop talking. <laughs> I couldn't stop talking, y'all. Marcus says Queen of Mexico and out now. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man. Yo, this is fantastic. What happens next at Quito while you were talking? I ordered a ticket for Indiana at Dallas Wings on July the 17th. It was very expensive, so I have done my part for the year. I went last year when they played, but much cheaper. You what happens next? Let's go. That that's that's fantastic. I I am I am so ecstatic. You're gonna have a great time at the game. And I am just that's awesome. Like, let's go. Let's go what happens next. Let's, you know, you, 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 you yeah, you, you got your ticket and you ready. Cause, cause that those prices may, may actually go up from here on out. Those prices may go up. <laughs> um, so you, you, you got your ticket, you know, going once a year. I think that's fantastic. 